What in the world is happening with the 10-year treasury and the dollar, the DXY, the dollar relative strength? We are down at 101 on the dollar relative strength, the dollar losing value, uh, people coming out of the dollar, going into the bond market and driving the yield down. So the price of bonds goes up and the yields come down. We are down at 3.89 currently. So under the, the 3.9 handle there, I'm looking at zero hedge, banks usage of the Fed's bailout facility soars to record new high. Could this be why? Is it because we've seen the Fed now pause, indicate possible rate decreases going forward? We are in a precarious time, but in a time where the debts are rolling over over the next year or two with higher with higher bond yields that need to be paid off. Uh, the, this, this accruing debt, this massive debt, $33 trillion and higher bond yields now that are going to have to be rolled over into and paying at this higher rate, 4%, 5%. This is the world we are entering, where we are in a debt doom loop, as people like James Lavish talk about, Greg Foss, Larry Lapar, David Foley, Preston Pish, they, they all talk about this debt doom loop. And we are in that vortex. And this was always the end state. This was always the end game. We just had lunch with one of my dear friends, uh, Aaron, who we're going to have on here at some point uh, soon as well to talk about his real estate journey and his journey into Bitcoin. He's he's entered the rabbit hole a, a few years ago, but t talking about his journey and asking uh, many questions, I'm sure, as well. But he, we are just talking about this is the end of the fiat system. And actually, I saw some other another couple there that's in their 60s as well, and they're asking about this. And you know this whole system that they've lived it's hard to believe that it was corrupt and that it, that it is evil and that's what it is the fiat currencies of the world whenever a government makes currency out of nowhere and prints it out of nowhere counterfeits it out of nowhere it's breaking multiple biblical commandments just by its existence you shall not steal shall not shall not bear false witness shall not covet uh, your neighbor's uh, possessions <laughs> you shall not have other gods besides me these are, uh, you know, when we're in this materialistic fiat world, we're constantly, I need to work more. I need to, I need to find more cash. I need to find more currency. We're constantly doing things uh, at the behest of the dollar and idolizing dollars, idolizing fiat currencies, pesos, yens, whatever we're working for. So I think this is really the conundrum we're in because all fiat currencies go to zero. Every single one, 100% failure rate throughout history. All of human history, every single government currency has gone to zero eventually. Some might last five years or 10 years, some might last 100 years, but they all go to zero eventually. And because they're backed by nothing, they must be backed by energy. And dollars are not backed by any energy. They're not backed by oil. They're not backed by the military. They're all, they're backed by the, a gun to your head and you not making a decision. Tomorrow, if people said, if a couple percent of people, 5% of people, 3% of people said, I am not using the dollar any longer, this dollar would collapse. It would cease to exist. No amount of military or IRS agents or oil, anything is going to back that up and uphold that. It's impossible because money is psychological as well. It's a container for your time and energy, but it's also an information exchanger. Uh, it's a, a price discovery mechanism and that would collapse overnight. It's, it's psychological because whatever the humans believe that is going to store that money will store that money. And if they don't believe it will, then it won't. No matter what the properties it has, Bitcoin has the hardest properties on earth. Dollar has the weakest, yet humans believe that the dollar is okay to store their wealth in right now. Think about that. You have a, a, a money that's being adopted and you've got a currency that's literally worthless. It's not worth the paper it's printed on, but yet most people still store in, around the world store their wealth in that dollar. And it's a melting ice cube, as Michael Saylor has, has noted. It's losing its value every second of every day. That container that you store your time and energy in has the hole leaking out the side. This is what I realized over the last 10, 15 years studying the monetary system. Holy cow, this game is being completely run over all of us. And we're just a frog in the boiling pot. And this is the end game. The fiat end game is the Titanic sinking slowly under, under the waves until the last person is jumping off the bow and hitting the propeller on the way down. That's, that's what the game is until the people at the top have siphoned all the wealth, the time and energy away from the people. So how do you escape that? How do you escape that and get onto a life raft away from that system? And I had very big problems with how are you going to escape that for a long time? And there was no answer. There is no answer in politics or in a fiat-based system. As Jeff Booth says, you cannot fix reality from the current system. It's impossible. You're in the same loop, the same doom loop. So you have to remove yourself and come to a new system. 
This is why I found Bitcoin, because I was searching for the answers to the problem. Bitcoin is not a solution in, in search of a problem. It is the solution. It is, it is problems that have existed and we have found the solution. Life doesn't have to be hard. It is many times. Humans make it very hard on themselves, but we have a solution. We actually have a solution. That's the crazy part. And that's why I have hope. That's why Bitcoiners have hope. The crazy things we see, we see in the political system, that's just comedy. It's just theater at this point. Complete theater. So the dollar, crazy things happening with the dollar going down in value. It's going to continue going down in value against real things. It is right now against other currencies as well, which is hilarious. And that's going to continue. The Fed is going to have to print. Ultimately, they're going to have to print massive amounts of currency in conjunction with the Treasury. They're going to have to manipulate, move the goalposts, lower interest rates, print more and more currency over the next few years. The debts are going to balloon and go completely out of control and go exponential. Hockey stick curve. We're at that moment. I mean, just think, what, 10, 15 years ago? I wonder what the, I had to look it up. I should have looked it up. What the Fed's balance sheet was, I think, it was a couple trillion dollars. 15 years ago and now it's what 10 trillion dollars or more so we have this this ballooning of of assets and then the debt as well the debt that we had on on the balance sheet at let's see if i have this up somewhere but the debt we had on the balance sheet at the uh, for the country was what five ten trillion now we have 33 trillion dollars in debt so it took all that time just to accrue a couple trillion dollars in debt 200 years and now it's the last 15 we've accrued what 20 to 30 trillion extra in debt now where do we think that goes? you think that slows down and goes the other direction? These are questions that have to be answered. And there's no amount of politicians that are going to figure this out because politicians are in it for themselves at the end of the day. with two jobs, one to get elected and two to get reelected. Politicians are not there to help you. As Ronald Reagan famously said, the worst thing you can hear is a knock at the door, someone from the government saying, hi, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. That is not the government's job. The government's job is to make sure the borders are upheld, there's a common welfare, uh, meaning that the borders are secure and people are protected, and there's you know some type of military presence or there's some type of defense presence uh, between the states maybe, and that commerce is 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 going neatly between the people and, and you know settling disputes in essence if the states can't figure things out themselves. That's the role of the government, the, the federal government, the national government. We've gone so, so completely off the rails because we have decided to follow these two gentlemen and, and their path. And, and we have gone completely astray from what has made us an exceptional country. So watch for the debt market, the treasury market, and the DXY, the dollar relative strength, and the oil price. As we say, the trifecta, those three are what drive the economy. And everything else is a derivative of that quite honestly. And the liquidity indicators are Bitcoin, which is up at 44,000. So we're seeing again a flight out of the dollar into Bitcoin again, into bonds. And people kind of, you know, oh, things are going to lighten up. We're going to have, uh, which they're right over time here, they're going to have to print more currency. It's going to be, you know, high, fast times at Ridgemont High again. So the liquidity indicators are Bitcoin, the big one, and then gold and silver, which gold hitting all-time highs again. So we're, we're in, a, in a high liquidity environment and it's only going to get crazier and it's only going to be more liquidity pumped in the system in the coming years. So buckle up, get ready. I hope we are owning assets, building community. Bitcoin, gold and silver, food, energy, water, energy, defense, ammo, guns, firearms, land, and then number one community, building community. So please, please join this community. Be a part of something bigger than ourselves because community is the number one asset in a survival situation. It's what shores the things we are lacking, shores them up. In real life, in the digital world, knowing our, our local rancher, our local farmer, our sheriff there to uphold the constitution. We need to do these things to become a strong, resilient, independent people. I appreciate you. Please share this out. The algorithm hates truth. Question everything with boldness, even the existence of God himself. Trust, but verify. And this is not financial advice. It is freedom advice. And I'll see you on the next one.